If you're making a powered backpack, wouldn't it make more sense to put an inverter in it for 110 volts and run regular corded tools? When I spotted the thumbnail, I thought it would be the opposite, a bank of tool batteries producing 120 volts so tradesmen can use corded tools instead of hunting down an outlet and dragging around a 50 foot extension cord. This thing sucks and you're an idiot. Okay, some of those cut deeper than they needed to, but valid points across the board here. If you're nowhere near an outlet or the power's out, or just not hooked up yet where you're working, maybe the key is not making cordless tools spicier and longer runtime, but cutting the cord on corded tools. Or at least making that cord a bit more mobile by flipping the script on cordless tool brands and using their tool batteries to power good old fashioned universal AC jiggle boxes. Using our new backpack, known solutions, and whatever mods we can do to make it as sketchy as possible. And yes, we got plenty of comments calling this backpack, and us, stupid. Uh, yeah, you're 100% right. The channel that brought you gas-powered impact wrenches that nobody asked for made a death box of a backpack to juice up tools an extra 10%. Nobody over here is trying to sell you something or even pretend this is a good idea. The stupidity of it all makes it awesome, and you watching this right now makes it all happen, so... You're all culpable. Let's see what you're going to share the blame in today. Basically to take some of those DC batteries and have a power cord come out of them to power AC corded tools. And the way most people are going to be doing that, unless you know these guys, is with an inverter. In this case, a 1500 watt, 3000 watt peak inverter, DC wattage goes in one end and AC comes out the other. The only problem is this inverter, like most high power inverters we could find, it is 12 volts to commonly run off of deep cycle like batteries for trailers, RV stuff like that. And the batteries we have in plenty around here aren't exactly 12 volt, they're rather small anyways. So what we still need is basically a big fancy buck converter, essentially a step down transformer. This is a 1500 watt, 125 amp example that will take 18 to 20 volts and step it down to 12 volts for that inverter and ideally with as little loss as possible. So by hooking these things up so that they play nicely together and hopefully don't turn into a 4th of July type display, we can take the current 20 volt DC and turn that into a reasonably clean sine wave 100 or 125 volt AC at 60 hertz. And that's with M18, DeWalt, or Hercules batteries, which is sweet. This proves to be enough to yeah, run our lights, though they're LED, so not all that impressive here with the wattage. What we're after here, though, is power tools. Now, a lot of you suggested just running corded power tools instead of all this mess, and I'm going to have to assume those were mostly job site guys, GCs, stuff like that, because corded impact drivers, impact wrenches, you get laughed out of a shop around here for bringing one of those in. And even drills, while definitely capable, I don't want to be using one of these in an engine bay to remove a broken manifold stud. I don't know about you, but yes, corded grinders, saws, these are quite good, so that's going to be our goal, an 8 amp grinder and a 15 amp Makita Cirk saw. Trying to get the max out of them today. And, and it's beeping at us. Not happy with having to even turn this thing on. AC motors, as you're probably familiar with, start up hard and fast, which makes for a current spike, which is how you get all these lovely shop vac horsepower ratings. The inverter, not so happy with that reality. Okay, so maybe not a 15 amp saw, and yeah, more beeping even from an eight amp grinder now. This inverter is pissed. So let's find out its limits and then fix it so we can actually dyno some tools today. So here's your friendly toaster oven. Let's see if our current setup is enough to make some baked goods while camping. And still not happy. This 3000 watts peak inverter doesn't seem to be peaking all that high. To find out at what point that is, let's employ an adjustable heat gun here and dial it up on the back until we find its beeping point. So we got seven, 800 watts, no problem, 900, 930, 990. And yeah, it's 1000 watts, 1000 watts and it beeps, 1100 watts and it cuts out. The gun will go over that, but not hooked up to one of these. Our Amazon inverter just, yeah, it sucks, of course. Though hadn't really done the mental math until just now, 1500 watts peak per plug is 3000 watts combined, not each. And that 1500 watts appears to be more like 1100 watts with a level of 1000 watts complaining. So the solution is, of course, a 4000 watt inverter with the same number of outlets and a 165 amp or so buck converter transformer, which would be even more stupid than what we're already doing here. This is maybe $350 with the hardware. Okay, fine. But now we're talking a thousand bucks.
let's address the obvious elf in the room. These things already exist, and you don't have to wear them on your back, but if you did, you'd likely have a much lower incineration risk. DeWalt, Ryobi 40 volt Milwaukee make inverter boxes to take power tool batteries, so we bought the latest and highest rated one in our arena. That's 700, 650 bucks. The Milwaukee M18 3600 watt slash 1800 watt a plug inverter for power tools that shouldn't beep at us when we try to cut something, ideally, and costs less than making our own at this point. But on its face, isn't this kind of lame? Are we really just going to make an inverter mobile battery box review now? There's plenty of those out there, so let's see what this can do and also see if we can do some stupid stuff with it to make powering your corded tools longer more feasible and just how long that would be with a bank of batteries compared to using cordless tools that these batteries were made for. So this M18 inverter, pretty sweet we think, up to 48 amp hours or 864 watt hours when you max it out with HD 12.0s if you have $1,000 worth of batteries here. Though it does have this slide over lock to keep your stack stuck inside when unattended. And yeah, also 120, 123 volts and when dialing up the heat gun, 800, 900, 1000, over 1000, 1500 watts. Now that's what we're after here. It doesn't even mind the 15 amp saw startup either. And you can also charge the bats all at once by plugging in this cord, which is cool. The downside is, assuming you aren't swimming in M18, filling this up with just 6 amp hour high output M18 packs would cost the same or more than the inverter at retail, which might explain a little why it's not too insane of a price point, this thing. They know they got you for at least 4 or 8 batteries, so this is where we step in to ruin their calculus. Another call to our guy, 3D printed adapters on Etsy, no affiliation, and we got four adapters designed to work with now in addition to Milwaukee, DeWalt, and Hercules batteries on this inverter. With the correct resistors to fool the communication the M18 inverter is expecting, and hopefully just put all of the watts it's willing to draw out into your tools. But they don't quite fit. The red inverter has a strange fifth tab or pin in the center where most tools don't have that, so hopefully it's not too important. New adapters were offered to incorporate this, but we tried first just using a three inch cutoff tool to notch out the center and leave room for that pin and ignore it altogether. So in goes just around $350 worth of Hercules 12 amp hour batteries with the same number of Samsung 30T2700 cells inside as an HD 12.0. And it appears happy with this new relationship. And yeah, we're getting over 1500 watts from the heat gun too, nice. The one downside we can tell so far is that they won't charge like this, so that feature only works with M18. But yeah, the beauty of this is that it also works just as happy with DeWalt batteries. Three brands worth of packs on hand, and yeah, of course you could upgrade to the largest 18 slash 20 volt battery on the market in here with the 15 amp hour DeWalt for a total of 60 amp hours or 1,080 watt hours. If you're feeling frisky and $1,400 too heavy at the moment, yeah, pull that trigger. But the point of this thing is whatever color batteries you have hanging around at the time, you don't need to pay matching color prices when you have the right adapter. So let's see what she can do and how long she can last compared to cordless tools using these same batteries. So the Makita 15 amp saw under a load similar to ripping some 2x, the M18 inverter with a mix of 6 to 12 amp hour M18 batteries actually makes really good speed, a couple hundred more than we're used to. But maxed out with load until it cuts out and then turns off and on again, we see this. Nine hundred and twenty watts more than when we tested it plugged into the wall, though that was my old shop, seventy year old wiring. Good thing we didn't test any other fifteen amp corded tools. So pretty cool. Of course, keep in mind that's nine hundred and twenty watts out of the dyno. This pulls fourteen fifteen hundred watts from the wall or this inverter when max. Corded tools, not the most efficient beasts. And here's with the Hercules batteries. They don't have six amp hours, so it's a mix of five, a couple eights, and a twelve amp hour to match. It looks like 880 watts, nice. And here's all 12 amp hour Hercules batteries, basically like the power pack we made, but actually working with AC.
960 watts. Damn, I'm not even sure why this would go up or down based on the batteries used, but pretty cool to measure either way. Okay, now for DeWalt packs, this is a mix of 6, 8, and a 15 amp hour pack. 5,020, 5,030 RPM under load, that's already a good sign. This is it maxed out. Nine hundred and ninety watts. Dang. Again, not sure why it would be different. Seems like it should either work or not. But Dewalt batteries are known for flying a bit blind, just opening the tap full bore and letting the tool regulate. But in this case, there's nothing throttling that. So far, this is working way better than we assumed it would. Thought it might beep at us more than this thing did. That is so far just one plug outlet, though. This is supposed to do like thirty six hundred watts. So let's run this fifteen hundred watt worth of heat gun while dynoing the saw and just try to kill something if we can. So still 840 watts at the dyno, that's pretty good. And here's with the Hercules 12 amp hours. So it made it to 850 watts before the inverter shut off into protection mode and we get the inevitable beep. Not bad though, like 3100, 3200 watts max, much better than what we were working with. Now it's time for the pinch test. The most peak watts we got out of the saw was with DeWalt batteries for some reason. So let's take her for a test ride with the dullest blade we have and try to stall the tool or get more beeps. Loading the tool slowly until max out is fine for science since we're measuring things, but most folks know when you trip a breaker, it's not a long gradual cut, but when the tool is pinched, like cutting between two saw horses without support in the middle, this is where the momentum of these tools cause them to really not want to get stuck. So I'm basically pushing down here to encourage that pinching action and finding any weak points in our setup. Nice, so the wood lost today, followed by the 15 amp saw slowing and nearly stalling, and the ketchup inverter with the mustard batteries unfazed. So runtime. Runtime is going to be the main drawback of any cordless setup compared to wall plugs or gas generators. Let's set this thing up with 12 amp hour packs, liquid cooled dyno motor, and a mini fan pointed at the saw, and see what dies first, the batteries, the saw, or our dyno. So we're comparing against the average seven and a quarter inch cordless saw here because we wouldn't know what brand to compare to at this point. We got a lot wrapped up in here, Makita, Hercules, Milwaukee. What's interesting to see here is no drop off in RPM like we typically see with cordless tools directly tied to that battery input voltage. The inverter stays at 120, 123 volts here. So the saw stayed at 5,250 RPM under this constant, somewhat low load. And yeah, it lasts a long time, unsurprisingly on 48 amp hours worth of battery, 54 minutes and 282,000 revolutions under that constant load. Only tapering off in the last minute of use or so before the inverter cut off, which it did a good job of doing. After measuring the packs, it looks like it took them down to 14.2, 14.4 volts, 2.8 to 2.9 volts per cell in that pack. That's pretty dead, but nothing insane, close to typical. These all charged up just fine, good stuff. 54 minutes and 282k revolutions is a lot more than the average 14.4 minutes and 68.8k revolutions we've seen with cordless, but obviously much larger battery chain to pull from than our typical 8 amp hour test. Adjusted to compare to those, the Cord and Makita comes in with 9 minutes and 47,000 revolutions per 8 amp hours worth of battery. And considering the efficiency of most AC universal motors, that's better than I expected. I mean, look at this cobalt. Now, is this thing going to replace our 16 horsepower, 12,000 watt gas generator? Well, no, not likely. We get around two hours per gallon or 13, 14 hours per fill on this guy when loaded. It just scales better. 
But for something smaller, easily thrown into your pickup truck for a job site and actually delivers the beans, we really like it, can recommend. And with some battery adapters that have so far proven to be one of the least sketchy things we've put together here, you could even outfit it with much lower price tag packs featuring these same cells, making this semi-feasible for regular use. Good suggestion for us to try out, sorry for the stupidity. And as always, thanks for watching.